Hey everybody, it is me, your favorite OM system employee, I'm sure, Ms. Shayla. Nice to see you again on another episode of OM System Live. We are going to be doing another monthly photography feature with two different photographers, two awesome different photographers who like to get down low and dirty and slimy and into the mud. Um, I'm very, very excited to have them on tonight. I'm seeing a ton of people from the UK. I'm sorry that you guys have to stay up so late with us tonight, but thank you so much for joining us. I also see another Rosencrans from Nashville in the audience. That must be somebody we know. And of course, I see a lot of familiar faces, including a Benjamin who says, Michelle, you never call me anymore. Sorry, I'm calling you right now. So let's do the do's and the don'ts. We're going to go through tonight. We are going to view some beautiful images and hear some awesome tips from our guests that are on the show tonight. Um, and as we go through there, as we get to the end of each segment, we can do a little Q&A. Um, and then at the end, we will also be able to wrap up with a few questions and answers. If you are joining this late and you're just now catching this and you're like, oh my gosh, can I watch this later? Do not worry. This will live in perpetuity on the internet. Uh, it will be on YouTube and our Facebook pages indefinitely. So you can always watch the replay later if you really, really, really enjoyed it. We love that. Um, oh, am I loud? Alan Sharp says I'm coming in loud and clear. I hope I'm not too loud, guys. You know, I uh, like to yell a lot. All right. So I think that pretty much settles it for the night. So our first guest tonight is actually an OM system ambassador. Our first guest is Jamie Rosencrans from Nashville by way of the UK. Yeah. Yep. Hello. <laughs> Howdy, Nashville. Um <laughs> Yeah, I'm from Nashville, but I've lived in London for 11 years. And um, yeah, I, I'm i so excited to be here. This is awesome. And I'm like, I'm so like, I kind of just want to hang out with the chat because they're having so much fun. <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like you have a few fans in the chat. Uh, somebody said, Jamie is a big reason I have an Olympus now. Aww. So look at you. You're evangelizing. Thank you. You're out there you. evangelizing. Yeah, you, we've got quite um, a, a fan club going in the chat. Thank you guys all for your support down there in the chat as every week. So Jamie, tell us a little bit about what you like to photograph. I think I can guess considering the <laughs> name of the episode, but um, tell us a little. Yeah, I, I picked this photo, which is, I mean, it's, I guess if you don't know what it is, you might think it's someone who's been in an accident, but it's actually, <laughs> it's actually a type of mushroom um, it's one of the first mushrooms that comes out here anyway, where I live in Southeast London. So it's kind of like oh. the first sign of autumn. It's a beefsteak fungi and you can actually eat it. Although I'm similar to you in that I don't want to die. So right. I'm really careful. <laughs> if I don't know 100% what it is and I leave it where it is, I don't do a ton of foraging. I'm more into uh, photographing the mushroom. So yeah, it's like all these beautiful, gory, magical droplets um, are called gatation. And it's my favorite thing to photograph. When you get that many in one shot, it's just like eye candy. So I love zooming in and getting this kind of otherworldly macro situation. So you don't even know what you're looking at. Um, so. Right. It's almost like a really interesting abstract macro eye candy yeah. but not not eat candy I don't want to eat this <laughs> I really like sci-fi and I mm -hmm. think this is why I've gotten so hardcore into macro is that you just you're roaming around looking at all this really tiny stuff and it's it's insane this whole other world that you didn't know was there and um yeah people people are always shocked a that any of this is from London um mm. I mean, some of my photos are from Nashville when I go home and visit or other places. But um, yeah, there are mushrooms everywhere, guys. And London isn't just old buildings and concrete. There's tons of beautiful nature reserves and green spaces. Um, and, you know, the UK in general is is gorgeous um, and plentiful for this kind of thing. So, yeah. I mean, I immediately picture mushrooms when I think of England because it's like very moist and soggy there. So I just picture mushrooms are everywhere. I picture they're just 
on every street corner is a mushroom, but I guess that's incorrect. <laughs> I was really worried that we actually wouldn't have a good mushroom season this year because of the drought. Um, oh. I'm not a mycologist. I'm barely a naturalist. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm just a photographer who likes art and nerds out over sci-fi stuff. And I have been so pleasantly surprised how much there is this year. And um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I, I, I'm having the best season so far that I've ever had. Um, so I don't know how that is related to the drought. I would love someone smarter than me to tell me in the chat so yes. I can learn something. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been great so far. Awesome. Well, let's take a little bit of a dive into your photos, but can you first share a little bit about um, how long you've been photographing with Olympus or OM system cameras? So I had an interest in photography when I was a kid and my dad was really into photography, had a ton of cameras. And um, my first camera was actually one that he, I think he loaned it to me and I promptly lost it, but sorry, dad. It was a, a, a disc film camera. So like the film was actually on like a little floppy disc that you would put in. Um, and that's how I started with photography. And then, um, yeah, I, I think my first Olympus camera I got was the EPL one, which is just like a compact point shoot. You know, I just sort of learned photography basics on it. Um, and then um, had the OM one, uh, sorry, the OM, I've written this down because I knew that I would do this. The EM one, uh, sorry, the EM 10. Um, and then the OMD EM1 Mark III, and now I have the OM1. So I've just kind of like been adding and adding and building <laughs> and as I've learned and got along. Um, but I got into macro, like so many people during lockdown. I'd always mm -hmm. done photography. I'd love photography, but it was like portrait and landscape and travel photography. And this, just seeing the stuff that people were getting, slime molds were the first thing that I saw. And I, I'd never heard of them. I didn't know what it was. And the photographs were just mind blowing. And so I got the 60 millimeter 2.8 macro mm -hmm. lens and just went out into the woods because it was like the only thing you could do um, and not be around people. And I just figured it out. <laughs> I just practiced and practiced and took a ton of really horrible pictures um, and just, you know, figured it out along the way. And it's been like the most exciting, amazing two years of my life. Um, definitely all I do on the weekends. My, my partner is basically a weekend widower. He doesn't see me on Saturday and Sunday because I'm, like, I'm out somewhere in the mud, you know, looking for springtails and slime mold and, you know, <laughs> but it makes me happy and it's, it's so much fun. So yeah, I, um, people ask me all the time advice on cameras and lenses and like, I don't know anything about any cameras that are not Olympus because I've never had anything else. And that is the honest truth. Um, so I can talk to you about macro setup for Olympus, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's fair. We like having you on our team. Thanks. So that kind of explains your Instagram name, this forest floor, because you're always digging around on the forest floor. What do you bring with you to prepare for the forest floor? Okay, so I have, I still have the, the, um, the, the EM1 Mark III, and I have that mm -hmm. as a backup camera. I learned when I went to Costa Rica, I learned that I needed to have a, a backup camera because you just never know what's going to happen. Um, and so there were days where it was, it was crazy and we, you know, we're running out of batteries and the things get fogged up and it's a good idea. So I have both cameras still and I, I carry them with me, but primarily I'm using the OM-1 with the 60 millimeter macro lens. If I'm trying to get super, super tiny little things, then I'll, I'll pop on the, um, the Raynox, which gives you like an extra two and a half magnification. So, but I don't always need it. It really just depends on how small things are. Um, but I, when I went to Costa Rica, I mentioned that. So I actually went with two other Olympus photographers, Tibor, who's always blowing up the chat on here 
and yes, Rory. Yeah. They're good friends of mine. And we went mm-hmm. to Costa Rica and Rory was kind enough to loan me a flash and a diffuser so that we could do night photography because prior to January, I'd never used a flash. I'd only done natural light and I got so addicted to doing night hikes and looking for crazy critters and bugs and slime at one in the morning um, that this summer I went ahead and just got a Cygnus tech diffuser from Brendan. They're amazing. Um, And I got uh, the Godox flash, which I think everybody um, you know, ha- says good things about that. So I go now about 50% natural light, 50% um, flash and diffuser. And it's amazing because I have everything available to me. You know, if I have the time and I want to set up a long exposure shot on a tripod and do some long exposure stacking, you can make it look like you've had a flash. I've had people query whether I'm using a flash on those types of shots. Um, if mm-hmm. I just need to get that photo and have it be crisp and I don't have time to do lots of focus stacking, then I'll use the flash and diffuser and it's just always great. <laughs> it's amazing. So, yeah. And um, a mud tarp. And I like the mud thing. tarp. <laughs> yeah. That's um, my friend, my friend, Jamie suggested this to me because I bought this like little foam pad that like Mm -hmm. barely covered the space that is my backside. And, and so I'm like, it's fine. And um, so I'm like sitting on this and I'm always kind of like, just trying to keep like one cheek on it. And he's like, why don't you just get a mud tarp? I have this mud tarp and I can fold it up. And so it had just never occurred to me to do that. But yeah, you can just pull it out put it on top of God knows what, and then you can stretch out and get comfortable um, so that you're not wet and covered in whatever, um, you know, for the rest of the day. Although I'm still washing spiders out of my hair. Um, Yeah, I know you're not a fan, but it's, you know, (laughs) you go off trail and you're like digging through stuff. You just end up just kind of become one, become one with the nature. You'll get there. I don't want to become one with any spiders. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to all my macro homies down in the chat. I don't want to become one with the spiders. <laughs> all right. Let's, let's, let's... Well, yeah, that's pretty much the stuff that I use. Okay. So these are so disgusting. I love them. What is oozing <laughs> out of this one? Please explain. <laughs> that's just flirtation. If you think about it, it's like, um, it's like mushroom sweat. And they sort oh. of release this as they grow. Um, it's kind of a, it's a good sign of like a really healthy, fresh, young mushroom. Um, this is a wrinkled peach mushroom, Mm -hmm. which the last time I looked into it was a red listed mushroom. Um, it may not be anymore, but they primarily grow on elm trees and because of Dutch elm disease, um, Mm -hmm. they're protected and endangered. So people find them, but you don't see them often and they're so cool and they're cool at every stage so they're cool when they're just like little bitty juicy tiny little nubbins and they come up and you can just see you know all this little beautiful sparkly um stuff on top and then they grow into these really cool wrinkled peach mushrooms i mean you can see why they're called that but um i have a log (laughs) i have a log (laughs) that isn't mine but i know where it is and only a couple of people also know where it is and these grow on it every year at the same time every week on clockwork you go there they are there and um so i was lucky enough to go back i've been going back pretty much every weekend for the last um few weeks and updating kind of checking on them and getting new shots so this is from last year but i've got another one further down um anyway the other shot um is a slime mold Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's another great. there's another Olympus photographer named Barry Webb, and he's he's basically like the OG of slime mold. He's absolutely amazing, and this was my attempt to get a Barry Webb esque shot because he's his stuff is just always so clean, and the colors are just amazing, and the background is super buttery. Um, so yeah, I did a long exposure stack for this. Um, Mm -hmm. So you've got, you go down to like, you know, 
one second with the shutter speed. You've got to have it stabilized on a tripod. Um, and then, yeah, you, I've got the settings on there for anyone who wants to write it down. Cause that's kind of like standard for doing, for doing that, depending on the light. But, um, yeah, that's about eight frames. Um, mm -hmm. and it's amazing how kind of crisp and clean it came out. So yeah, um, that's a, that's a cool one to find. Nice. I love that. Um, I just like picture how close. So I found slime molds this week. We were um, out in the, the in Wyoming this weekend and I found one under a log and I had never actually seen one in real life until I started looking because of this episode. And I was so, they're so small. Like they're so much smaller than I imagined. Like mushrooms, I've photographed mushrooms. They're bigger, but these little tiny, mm. tiny things that live you know what they underneath were. the forest floor. Did you, do you know what kind they were? Did anyone tell you? No, you're just like. No, we were out wandering by ourselves, but I was like, it, oh my it. gosh, like you have to be so unbelievably close to capture these. So I'm even more impressed with your work now that I've witnessed this in real life and <laughs> understand well, the challenges. The trick to this, if you want to go to the next one, because I've got, I've got, I've put a lot more slime, I think, in this than actually uh, fungi because they're not in the same group. Um, this is coral slime. And then mm -hmm. this is Hemonitis, which I think it's Flavogenita. I'm going to say that wrong and someone's going to crush me in the comments, but that's okay. Um, basically, you, as you do this, you kind of figure out what is a, like, I can kind of see out of the corner of my eye, like 15 feet away, a tree that is down and kind of know whether I need to go over there or not based mm -hmm. on how much bark is left on it, if there's moss on it. If it's rained recently, there's kind of like, I know my woods near me so well that I know where all the stuff grows on all the downed trees and all the logs. Like it's, it's like ultra nerd territory. So like I could take you to the woods and be like, would you like to see coral slime right this way? And so this is the thing, when you start doing this, you kind of develop this relationship with the places that you go and kind of figure out where stuff is. Um, but the cool thing about both of these is that they start out as literal like goo. It just doesn't look like anything. And then it, the shape changes over the course of a few days or a few hours into something completely different. Like coral slime can look fluffy. It can have like really long tendrils. Like it can get really weird. Um, and it's all very awesome. Nature is magic. <laughs> Yeah. It's absolutely magic. So somebody was asking, how do you um, pick your number of shots for your stack? Do you just kind of guess at it or are you, do you have a secret sauce for what you do? Well, I would say the secret sauce for anyone is don't drink seven cups of coffee in the morning absolutely, <laughs> and then go out into the woods and try to do handheld stacking. Um, <laughs> because it's just gonna take you longer because the stabilization and all of the OM system cameras are amazing. But like when, you, when you're like this with your camera, it like it can't compensate for that many cups of coffee. So it really just depends. So the lower, I would do as many frames as I could if it would make the shot better. But sometimes you don't need to do 99 frames of something if you're if you're photographing insects and there's so many different intricate things and colors and shapes 100 percent people who make do those photos ben is one of them they're just sick they look amazing but for this you can you can get something that's really beautiful and keep some of the soft details in places because it's not all super crisp so i'd say it depends on what it is that you're photographing and how easy it is for you to stabilize yourself to figure out how many frames to do on a stack. I also want to say that I only use the in-camera stacking, the composite stacking. I don't do bracketing and then put it into Helicon or some other kind of program. Um, kudos to those people who have the time and the patience to do that. But I, I'm just like 15 is the most I've ever stacked because that is what's available within the camera. And that's all I've ever needed. So it works really well for me and I could just go on to the next thing. Um, so, yeah. All right. What um, are we looking at here? What do we have here? What are these called? 
Um, I don't know. This is Nashville. Oh. Uh, I bet Rosie knows. <laughs> Rosie's in the chat somewhere. I mean, I'd say it's like maybe in the like Amanita family, but I don't know. I found these um, a couple of a couple of years ago in Nashville, and so this is with the EM1 Mark III, and it's it was just like a really mm -hmm. simple single kind of leaning over a bridge um on a log all oh, rosie doesn't know that's all right i didn't mean to put you on the spot <laughs> dang it rosie that's it rosie can't come to the show next week sorry <laughs> um but yeah there's this great nature reserve in nashville called radnor lake and they just have mushrooms growing on everything all year long like anytime you go it's just blows my mind um and this was just like a really lucky pretty kind of fairy core cottage core shot so Nice. Cottage core. I like that you just referred to mushrooms as cottage. My kid's going to love that. I'm going to tell her as soon as we're done. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what uh, it is somebody, about. somebody just asked, wait a second. You're telling me all the time spent in Helicon can just be configured in camera. <laughs> Yes, there's in-camera focus stacking in OM system and Olympus cameras. It is limited to 15 shots, but yeah, you don't have to stack your images in post-processing. You can definitely do it directly in camera. What have you done, Michaela? <laughs> I've started a mess. This chat is wild tonight, guys. There is a party on YouTube. If you're watching this on Facebook, I apologize because YouTube's going nuts. <laughs> Um, all right. What do we, I, okay. So the mushroom sweat, this is new to me. I did not know that mushrooms secreted. <laughs> so yeah. I'm, I'm learning a so, lot with you tonight. So this is from Sunday. So I took this this past weekend and I, the previous weekend, all you could see was just like some white mycelium, which is kind of like the foundational kind of, you know, root mm -hmm. system that's like through everyone's seen fantastic fungi. It grows through everything. And that's what you know, the mushroom is the fruit of the mycelium. So you can start to see those patches on logs and things before it actually pops up and turns into something really cool and wild. So um, yeah, this is a current recent shot of this year's batch of, of wrinkled peaches. And um, yeah, I just took, this is, this is the magic of having a flash, right? I, I took me like three seconds. I took this single shot, it's awesome. Don't have to do anything to it. It just looks, it just looks really, really great. And so right. this is where like, sometimes if, if I'm trying to make a choice of how much time to spend on something, I can switch out the kit to kind of dedicate time to one thing or another based on what aesthetically is going to look better. Um, the, so this next to it. So what, what we were looking at earlier, that like yellow slime, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. this is a pink version. And so it starts out as like little, balls and then it grows up into these like tendrily things and then sometimes you get little droplets on top of that and it's just like so much fun to photograph it's such a treat to find it because it's just wild looking um and we're talking about like you know some of these are like a centimeter tall i should have put some perspective shots in here i, I do this on instagram too people are like how big is it and i'm like yeah i should like so i'm trying to take pictures where i like point to yeah, and your so fingernails. See, but now I have to get my nails done all the time. So like people are. It like, is a hard batch of work to be a mushroom photographer these days. Yeah, Jamie. man. You know, I'm just like I'm just out here trying to have fun and like teach people. No, it's fine. I would get my nails done anyway. Um, yeah, I so. yeah, I love this hairy guy. The the stringy. It it looks like bad spaghetti. I'm also not going to eat this one either. No. No, that's not, slime molds aren't a thing you eat. But the crazy thing about this one is if you like breathe on it or if like a slug starts crawling on it, it can kind of like go back into liquid form. Mm -mm. So like I've seen that happen before. You're like taking the shot and it's like changing because it's environment's changing. And so, yeah, they're weird. So I'm kind wonderful. of convinced that these slimes potentially are aliens. I'm not going to lie. Um, I mean, I'm not mad about that. I <laughs> I let's uh works. let's okay so this is like a combination of all of our macro friends in the chat right now we've got bugs and molds <laughs> yeah you know I'm trying to represent so in the summer I shoot lots of of insects I mm -hmm. I didn't start out really being that 
captivated or interested in them, but it's because I didn't, I didn't know any better and, and I know better now. And so now I've like, I love, every, I love all of it. Um, yeah. So this is a, is a, is a wood louse. And I don't know if he's like taken a nap on the log and this has happened <laughs> while it's sleeping or if it like willingly crawled up in the coral slime and it's just like chilling with the coral slime. But I just thought it was like really beautiful, lots of good textures. There's got some goopy textures of the slime. His body is has some like nice sharp lines. And so there's a good juxtaposition of, of the hard and the soft and I love the color. So yeah, I was, I was really pleased with this one. Um, and again, this was like four frames um, because it's all I needed. It's mm -hmm. all I felt I needed. So you don't have to do a million stacks of everything. Now, this one looks like you might have the, the flash hitting it too. Did you have flash on for this? Yes, as definitely. Well? Yeah. 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 So those settings, um, if you've got, if you do the, um, the, the F stop at F 10 and then you do, um, shutter speed at, uh, uh, 160 and then ISO at 250 with the flash. That's, that's usually kind of the sweet spot. And then you tend, I tend to adjust everything. I, I do everything manually. Mm -hmm. So I've got custom buttons set up depending on what I'm doing, just so I can kind of flick through quickly. It's one of the amazing things about the OM one is there's four custom buttons. So I've got right. one for natural light. I've got one for long exposure stacking. I've got one for flash and I've got one for flash when I want it to look like natural light. So, so you've, you've got it all around. I love the custom modes for that. I finally last weekend set up my custom modes for starry sky. So number four is now my starry sky settings. And I'm so proud of myself for committing to it because I always forget custom modes. But I like that you're dedicated enough to have four custom modes for specific types of macro. I love that. This is the thing, though, is all of this stuff I have learned from other people, and I don't want to take complete credit for being some sort of like genius at figuring this out, because Rory actually told me, he was like, why don't you have custom buttons? Are you literally going out with your camera every day and adjusting every picture? And I was like, yes. <laughs> He's like, yes. well, that's cool. It's cool that you know how to do that, but you could also just set these. So he took my camera from me and he's like, what would you like the settings to be? And I was like, well, for natural light, I would like this and I would like this. And so he like went through and did it all for me. So thank you, Rory, wherever you are in Canada. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen Rory yet tonight, but everybody yeah, else is here. Yeah. He's always, he's always traveling and doing stuff. Oh, so this little guy on the right is what I saw in the forest. So what is this? Do you know what this thing is? Oh yeah. That's um, so that's a, a green elf cup fungi. Um, so it's like, you know, it's in the mushroom family and they, they grow on a particular type. They're actually quite easy to find. If you see a bit of, of wood that's kind of stained blue and you mm -hmm. flip it over, there tends to be these, um, if it's, if it's not been too terribly dry. Um, but if you find the wood and there isn't anything there and you can come back later and they may have grown on it. So yeah, they're really great after rain because they're little cups. And so they'll hold right. like a little droplet of water and make a really lovely um, photograph. Um, and then this is a slime I found in my woods a couple weeks ago. And I, I don't know what it is. I think it might be some kind of like tapioca slime mold. Um, it was really young and it had just started raining. But I just thought it looked so cool, like a little labyrinth um, going on. It, it's just, it's like my favorite, it's my favorite thing. I just love the textures. So I do too. It, it looks like, well, there's a lot of things these things look like, but I'm I know. a huge fan I mean, of the cups. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Otherworldly. Yes. 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 See? Aliens, I'm telling you. So yeah. somebody wants to know what, well, you're in the UK, so it might be a little different from when you were living in the US, but what would you say the best season is for mushrooms for you? I mean, it's pretty much the same as, as Nashville. I mean, Nashville has more intense winters and definitely more intense summers, but the fall and the spring is, is actually the weather's quite similar to what it's like here. So um, traditional fungi season, I think, except in Nashville, there just tends to be mushrooms all the time, which is, hmm. which is great for them, annoying for me. But here I start seeing mushrooms pretty much like in full, you know, really kicking off right about now. 
Um, mm -hmm. What I was saying earlier is with the drought, we, we got things started showing up and popping up like two, three weeks ago, which is not when I would normally find them in London, but it depends on where you are. Um, mm -hmm. There are people up north that were finding mushrooms in August. And so it just depends on your rain and your, your you know, the climate that you're in. Um, but, you know, October is traditionally the season for everyone, um, you know, at least in, in North America and Europe. Um, so, yeah, definitely get out there every weekend um, in October and you'll find tons of stuff. Nice. It's mushroom season year round in my house. I keep a lot of house plants and apparently I feed them well and fertilize them well because I grow all kinds of mushrooms in the dirt yeah, in my that happens house there constantly. <laughs> with, like the, with like the potting soil, there will be like, because there's just mycelium and like everything. Yeah. Um, right. It's crazy. I've always got a funky, cool mushroom growing in my house literally all year long. <laughs> it's got to be good luck, right? Like a ladybug landing on you or like whatever yeah. else people say. <laughs> oh, this one's funky. Oh, yeah, I like so the I like your bokeh in the background. That's nice. Yeah. So I love this is this is why people fall in love with natural light. And this was before I had a flash. Again, this is like a longer exposure um, stack, which again, somebody else taught me how to do Jamie Hall taught me how to do this. Um, because he just saw me struggling so much for so long to try to get the light. In. And he's like, why don't you just do it? You know, that the thing that I love about the macro community, and I just want to say this is that everyone is so helpful, so passionate. It's like, it's such an amazing community of people who, um, are not generally my experience has been they're not ego driven. They just want to like teach and learn. And, um, you know, it's it's really fun to go from not knowing anything to feeling like, you know, I'm not an expert by any means, but I feel like I like really know my stuff now, you know, and it's it's because of the time I've put into it. But it's because of a lot of really great photographers that have, have been extremely generous with their time. So right. this particular technique um, you know, it's a, it's an eight frame stack. Again, I've got it at, um, you know, one second on the shutter speed. So I've got it on a tripod, it's really stabilized and then it's a stack. So that last picture is just magic in the camera and you can see it on the screen. And so if it isn't magic, you change some things up and you do it again. And that's the, that's the really cool thing about the composite stacking in the camera. Okay, I just have to get this wholesome content up on the screen before I'm done. Um, Lynn W., Jamie's mom here. Dad and I are so proud of you. This is the wholesome content we need on this show literally all the time. I love your mom and dad for being here with us tonight. Hi. All my brothers and in there too. It's so funny. And all my friends. You guys are great. I love you. So much fun. All right. We have got to move a little bit quicker because we have one more oh, guest, fine. but let's get through it, Jamie. Just, let's do it. It's just me like having a hard time, like narrowing down photos to include in this. And it's just another example of like really great texture. So this is a lichen. These are mushroom gills, which re which reminded me um, so much of like the Joy Division album. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. On these mushroom gills, is, is this like a piece of a photo that you've taken and cropped in to get in that big? Or did you actually focus in that close intentionally? Kind yeah, of this isn't a crop. This is the photo. I took some wider ones. It's an oyster mushroom. So these are edible. Like you you could have taken this home and cooked it and probably not died. Probably. Um, That's a disclaimer yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but these are um, the lichen, however, is a crop. But yeah, that mushroom one is is as it was when I took it. So Awesome. Yeah, I love this this green guy. I, I've been looking at this photo for like three days every time I check the slides and I just it's so awesome. It doesn't look real. It does. Yeah, it's, it's so, it's other so bright and it's naturally this bright. And that's the great thing about mushrooms is most of the time you're like actually trying to tone things down and post processing um, because things are just too vibrant. Um, it's a mm. good problem to have. Right. Right. Especially in natural in the natural world, because sometimes we can have very dull colors, you know. So it's yeah. interesting. Ooh, okay, I mean, so what are we looking at here? This guys, gastropods are like underrepresented. And people think slugs are so gross and so awful, but they are not. They are cool. And they have these <laughs> amazing little silly mouths and they eat mushrooms. And so I thought it was relevant because he's eating a mushroom or she or it or whatever, the gastropod. Um, <laughs> this is just an orange slug. 
And um, yeah, I, I took video of it. I hung out with it. I've got way too many photographs and I just, it's like the most fun thing in the world to watch, to watch them eat. So I just had to, I want people to see this stuff and like, see that it's weird and awesome and cute and not scary and not gross. Um, I know this stuff isn't fun when it's like eating your garden and whatever. So I, I get it, but um, just send them to me, send me all your slugs and I will photograph them and rehome them somewhere. Maybe actually, yeah, don't do that. That's don't fine. don't, don't, address, so. no don't mail fun. Jamie slugs, please. <laughs> like, yeah, <that's> fine. <laughs> let's be clear here. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jamie, it's been awesome spending um, our evening with you. Actually, the late night for you. Poor Jamie is, you know, in the UK. I know we have a lot of UK people on here tonight and it's so late for you guys. So I appreciate you hanging out, being here, sharing your happy comments with Jamie in the chat. It's so so awesome. Um, okay, Jamie, what is your bucket list slime, mushroom, or bug that you have not shot that you really want to get a photo of? Um, there's a pretzel slime mold that I tried to photograph in Costa Rica and like fail, hard fail. Um, I would love to get that now that I have a flash because I feel like I could get all the detail and do a stack and it would be sweet. And then the mushroom that I want to find, everybody knows it's the fly agaric, which is not a rare mushroom, but they don't like me and I can't find them in Southeast London. So if anybody knows of any super secret spots that aren't in like Newcastle, please let me know because I just want to get some like really beautiful photos of this pretty common mushroom that I can't seem to locate. <laughs> I like that you had a vendetta against Newcastle there for a second. That was oh, it's just it's just yeah. I got a friend in there. I'm just I'm just being you know. <laughs> that was really harsh. Sorry to all of our viewers in Newcastle. Jamie apologizes. <laughs> no, it's because they've got the best. They've got really good mushrooms up north, and I just get salty about it. So you know, um, send them to me, guys. Also, somebody in the chat said they were going to send me slugs, and I would absolutely appreciate it if that never happened. Thank you. You can send me money and treats. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you back your evening because I know it's super late for you tonight. Um, you're welcome to hang out and say hi to your friends in the chat if you want. But if you want to go to bed, enjoy your evening. All you UK people, you in the chat have to stay with us because we have one more guest. Thank you Thank so you much, Jamie. Me. Have a great night, Jamie. You too. Whoop. Sorry, Jamie, I did not mean to hang up on you so quickly. <laughs> All right, next up, we have a guest that is joining us. And I actually found this guest from our Olympus um, user gallery on the Get Olympus site. And um, if you're not a user on our user gallery on the getolympus.com slash user gallery, I'm going to put it in the chat. You should share your images with us on there because sometimes that's how I find awesome, nice guests that take really cool photos and are very friendly and want to be on my episodes. So let's introduce OM system photographer, Robin Reitz. How's it going, Robin? Hi. Good, How thanks. are you? I am uh, <laughs> hanging in there. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's the end of the night for everyone and yeah. we're all very tired and winging it. So you guys out there in the comment section, be nice to us. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm going to bring up your uh, intro slide. Can you share with, ah, come on. There we go. Share with us where the heck you are. Where are you right now? Um, I'm in the Sunshine Coast, uh, BC, which is in like the northern area of the Pacific Northwest in um, British Columbia. So um, Southern Canada, I guess, Southwestern Canada. And um, we have a great area for slime mold because we have a very moist rainforest like environment um, and mushrooms. And uh, we kind of get them year round here, which is super lucky. Um, although it's been dry for a couple months, so it's been a bit rough lately. Um, but in normal summers, we usually get quite a bit of uh, rain. So this year has been a bit different, but normal years we get, we get a bit. So, um, nice. I think you are only my second Canadian I've ever had on the show. So we're <laughs> representing Canada tonight. So if you're in Canada and you're in the comment section, you need to tell us you're in Canada because we are representing your great nation right now. <laughs> so Robin, how did you get into OM system Olympus cameras? Where did you come from? Um, 
I had, I mean, my dad had a light or a um, dark room when I was a kid. Um, so mm -hmm. I've had been around cameras my whole life, but um, I had just, he'd given me a point and shoot when I was, mm, I don't know, probably 10 or 11. And I started out shooting spiders, like the orb weaver spiders, like in the garden mm -hmm. and stuff. But I didn't pick up another camera until I was in my thirties probably. Mm -hmm. And I just like randomly went into London drugs, which is our like kind of like electronics drug store hybrid kind of store here and I uh, grabbed an E620 that was on clearance. And nice. uh, I had no idea how to use an interchangeable lens camera <laughs> or even a camera period at that point. And I took it to Europe with me and had a massive failure in photography. So that was fun. Um, but I did get a few usable shots out of it and I learned how to shoot on that. So um, that worked out for me, I guess, is um, I'm now, but it I, inspired your love of learning photography. So now yeah. you're here and it's, I'm, I think I'm, this is my fourth camera in cause I've, then I had an EM5 and then an EM3, which I still have. And then, uh, or sorry, an EM1 Mark three. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, and now I have the OM1 and I shoot on the, the three and the one. Um, and I use the one mostly for birds and then the Mark three mostly for mushrooms and landscape so nice nice yeah. I also am a big on um, one bird fan myself <laughs> so what it, what first I'm going to show your images but I really am very curious to know what this is what are we looking at here is this a fungi is this a slime this is like a slime what? mold it's um it's the I can't think of the um latin name right now but it's called insect egg slime mold I believe and it mm -hmm. kind of comes any color from yellow to like a dark orange and it's really cool because it it's very shiny and it looks like clusters of eggs. So it's always fun to shoot because you can see that the background is quite dark and um, it stands out so far. Like you can see it from so far away because it's so vibrant in the forest. Yeah, it's impressive. I'm also learning a, a lot tonight about how brightly colored slime can be in nature. I'm actually just learning a very lot about slime <laughs> in general tonight. So <laughs> It's um, crazy. I find I have to desaturate a lot of stuff. Well, like, that's kind of what Jamie was saying. Yeah, yeah, that's what Jamie was saying is having to tone it down. I would never imagine that being the case, but it's, it's yeah. crazy how vibrant this all yeah. is. All right. I want to know what's in your bag. Share with us what you like to shoot with. Um, well, the um, OM1 Mark III is um, the probably the camera I'm most comfortable with because I know it a bit better than the OM1 that I'm just sort of getting used to and have been for the last few months. Um, and I haven't really used the, um, the 1240 very much. Like I've only taken it out a couple times. Um, the macro I've been shooting with since it came, since it was released essentially. So that's probably nice. the lens I've used the most throughout all of the years. And then I recently got the um, 100, 400, and that's what I've been using to shoot birds. And then the other things that I have um, that I can't live without are probably extra batteries, the kneeling and sitting pad, uh, rain gear, which is like, you, I can't live without because Pacific Northwest rain Right. winter fall uh and then uh bear bangers and bug spray because uh bug spray i do not like mosquitoes and they seem to love me same okay so i saw <laughs> this earlier i'm i'm like a mosquito attack they love me it's horrible yeah. i feel you there but what is a bear banger is it like bear spray no it's um it's like a um like a bullet or like, but like, or a gunpowder charge that, mm -hmm. um, that's just super loud. So it's like a, oh. um, it's, it's almost, it's not like a bullet, but it, it, uh, it explodes and makes a hugely loud noise and theoretically scares away cougars and bears and stuff. Cause I often am not anywhere near a trail or even close to trails or other people. So I kind of need some type of, uh, security if something decides to decide that I'm, edible 
Yes. We were, in the wo- <laughs> we were out in the woods this weekend and I learned a lot about bear safety too. I, I've I've been learning a lot about nature. I don't know that I'm a nature person really. <laughs> After all the things that I learned, like having to alert bears that were in the neighborhood and carrying bear spray with us everywhere. I was like, this is this is interesting. But now I know what a bear banger is too. And I'm bringing one next time because we did not have one of those. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that you have to be concerned about is that it doesn't get um, like the charges don't get wet. So I keep mine in a Ziploc bag. Um, that makes sense. Because it's gunpowder. And if it gets wet, it's going to be useless. Yeah. And I do think that they have an expiry date. So that's also something to check. I am impressed to have learned about these loud noise makers. I wonder if they work on um, getting just people away from me too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at some of your photos that you have taken. And I know you do a lot of bird stuff too, but I'm really interested to see in your up close. Ooh, I love that one in the middle. Ooh, that's so pretty. That pinkish Uh, hue. So the first one is a parrot mushroom. And um, I I feel like they, um, they have a pretty wide range because they grow anywhere from, it seems like California all the way up to me here, but they're very hard to find and they're not um, like they're dispersed in like, like small locations. Cause people mm-hmm. seem to have a hard time finding them. I believe that they're also across Europe and, uh, in the UK as well, but I don't think that like, they're very easy to find for some reason. Cause a lot of people are always asking me where I, I found them. And I happen to have one patch near where I am, which is great, but it's another one where you're laying on the ground and slogging through mud and and all the fun things to get to them and hoping that you don't get a few ticks. Um, right. The next one is uh, bleeding mycena. And I love to get these guys from the bottom because they're mm-hmm. translucent and getting the gill shots up always make for um, good lighting. So um, they're one of my favorite to shoot. If, if anybody sees my Instagram page, they can probably see that because there's a lot of them on there. <laughs> um, and then the other one's a coral mushroom and I'm not very good with coral identification. And I mean, I'm terrible with it. Um, so I'll just leave it at, it's a pretty coral mushroom and I like to shoot them. <laughs> Do you carry around like a Canadian mushroom guide with you when you're out and try to find them? Or do you just take the photo and then try to find out what you photographed later? I usually research them afterwards, Mm -hmm. um, but I've also been commercially picking mushrooms for since I was a teenager. Um, So uh, I know quite a bit about um, like the edible varieties of mushrooms and the non edible varieties. None of these are edible um, or not. They're not, I don't think any of them are not edible, but I don't think any of them are um, palatable. So, um, like I know I've, I've been immersed in them for so long that I have like a pretty good uh, visual identification skill just upon seeing them. Mm -hmm. See, this is my big fear of mushrooms. I actually do really much enjoy um, when I'm hiking, photographing mushrooms. I, they're so beautiful and intricate and you can get, you know, abstracts or, you know, just normal macros, but I am terrified of touching them or being too close to them in case they are like the one super murder mushroom that's there to just kill me. (laughs) So I need to, I need a guide. (laughs) Yeah. And that's another thing. I mean, it's really hard to identify a lot of them. So if you don't know, don't ever pick it or, and a lot of times, like you shouldn't even be touching them. Yeah. Like I see a lot of people like pick them and I mean, if you know, and you're comfortable, but if you could just take like touching it and putting your hand in your mouth to get quite sick from, so I don't recommend uh, interfering with them unless you really know. I have a no touch rule for mushrooms, (laughs) 100%. (laughs) So I see you have a couple of little tips here. And I I know that one is to get down low on the ground. Are you talking like laying on your stomach on the ground and photographing these? Oh, you are down and dirty. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) uh, It's fun. It's it's really nice when it's disgusting and rainy out. Um, I think two of these three shots were it was nice out, but... I know when I took the the green mushroom shots, it had been like pouring rain for a month before that. So that ground was a sponge. It was so wet in that area. Um, it, it was just absolutely horrible. And my rain gear now leaks and I haven't found the leak yet. So um, that was a very soggy day. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible time to figure out you have a leak in your <laughs> <It sure is. laughs> 
So you photograph, it looks like with natural light. Yeah. I've never even put the flash on my camera before. Oh, so um, you're kind of different from Jamie. Jamie went all in on the flash and you're hanging well, out with the natural lighting. But I'm at the same point as her probably because I'm wanting to explore the flash. So like I'm just behind her a little ways apparently um, because um, I've been curious about learning about it, but I just kind of haven't found the time or made the time to actually uh, delve into it. And it's like, it's working out okay for me, but she's right. Like sometimes when it takes 20 minutes to set up a shot and you could get it in two seconds, there's a big time savings and energy savings there, as long as you're getting the composition, right? So um, that's something that'll probably change in the near future. Nice. And you're, you're shooting in Aperture? That's your choice for macro photography? Yeah. Nice. What f-stop is your starting f-stop? Like, where do you like to jump in at? I knew my light was Usually f5. Yeah, I usually start at f5. This little frog was, it, I shot it in November. And it was the same spot as those green um, parrot mushrooms. And it was, um, it was, um, right, uh, right beside them. So it just kind of hopped up onto that stick when I was moving the leaves to shoot the mushrooms and it posed perfectly for me. It's great. He's so cute. What's in his hand or is that a branch in front He's of just him? leaning on a stick. Oh, that's so cute. He's very yeah. happy. Ooh, I love these. What are these little swirly things called? I love them and I don't know what their proper name is. Do you know what their name is? The one the on the right, the deer mm -hmm. fern. Yeah. Deer fern. Oh, now I know. Now I'm prepared. Yeah. yeah. And then I don't know what the little mushroom in the moss is, but I just really liked the composition. So somebody was asking, do you tend to use um, focus bracketing at all? Or are these all single shots straight out of camera? Um, unless it's uh, specified otherwise, they're all single shots. I am just learning focus bracketing right now. Um, it's, it's funny because I've had the Mark three for uh a year and a half or almost two years now and i never had the chance to start learning it until i got the om1 and then i started working on it so it's just like a new thing to me i'm like taking baby steps i'm starting with the focus bracketing and then i'll move on to the flash <laughs> yeah see well it's all a photography journey and you're you're in the middle of it and you're still getting amazing images and you're finding your happy place and that's what it takes Quickly, I would like to point out yeah. that the comment section has no idea what a deer fern is really called. There, I've seen four different answers. So <laughs> I've got file head, fiddle head, and there was one other one that I didn't under. Oh, you eat them in New England, apparently. Um, anyway, yeah, it's some places. <laughs> I don't know if these ones are edible specifically because these are um, a Pacific Northwest species. But there's mm -hmm. aesthetically, there's a lot of similar species and some are edible and some are not and palatable and not palatable. I think these ones are super bitter, so we don't eat them here. Got it. Got it. Uh, yeah, I'm just like reading the comments come through on yeah. me not knowing my plant species and getting all kinds of different answers out there. So maybe they call them different things depending on where you live. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. Okay. So I'll let you go through your, your tips really quick and stop interrupting you with me not knowing plants names. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I'm shooting things like the fiddlehead there, I took the light from behind it. Um, and then I underexposed it when I shot it and then upped the front light in, um, post-production, um, because I liked how the light was behind it. So it's like just choosing your light from where you want it to get the aesthetic that you're looking for. Um, that's what I do. Um, if the light's poor, which it generally is for me because I'm shooting in the rain and the dark in the forest, I use a beanbag stabilizer because um, usually I'm so close to the ground, even though my tripod is convertible to shoot underneath, like if, if I take it apart and it doesn't get me quite as low a perspective as what I'm looking for. So I've made my own beanbags out of um, just fabric. And then um, it's actually, I was looking for like plastic beads, but I couldn't find any at the time. So I just used beans. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a beanbag. Um, and then I just put it in the oven um, when uh, I get home if it's really wet out. And it seems to be holding up and it's probably 10 years old. So it the beans have now basically fossilized. 
So somebody's asking what kind of tripod you do use when you do use a tripod, but I do love the beanbag idea. That is great. Uh, I have a Manfrotto. Uh, I think it's a bee free travel. It's a carbon fiber one. So it's pretty light. Um, but I don't use it very often, to be honest. I use it as a monopod um, for birding, and that's pretty much the most I use it for. Um, I rarely use it for mushrooming or ferns and other stuff. Yeah, you really kind of have to get that down low in the ground. I've used yeah. uh, this this past weekend, we used several logs and stumps as tripods. That's yeah. what we were going for. So yeah, we kind of make do in nature, right? And find something we can lean on. <laughs> yeah, or I'll sometimes just like fold up my jacket if I don't have a beanbag. Mm -hmm. And then use that as like a stabilizer so that it's not moving around and it's on something that it's not tippy. So I mean, whatever you have, it works. I like your tip of using the live view screen too. Do you tilt it up so you can kind of sit above yeah. and, and see across? I absolutely do. Cause there's no way that you're going to get low enough to see in the viewfinder when it's sitting right on the ground like that. Um, if, if I have it sitting up on a log, it works, um, but it doesn't work on the, the ground. So I use a live view. Um, and then my other thing is get off the path and like I mean I'm not saying like go off in the middle of nowhere which I often do but don't <laughs> recommend but just get off the path like get off where it's trampled to death and just go even like just beside the path because you're going to see more things that aren't trampled to death so some somebody just asked um do you use a remote shutter when you're photographing or do you do a self timer or do you just, I just use a touch the shutter screen. oh that's smart the, do you use the the touch and and capture mode where it automatically like, shoots it from the touch screen yeah and I do it like I do the focus touch so it'll focus mm -hmm. and then like on my focus point where I want it to focus and then it takes the shot on my point of focus got it so, yeah I love I, I use touch screen focus all the time I love that feature and I also <laughs> often shoot with the magnification on like 14 times so that I can see exactly where I'm focused so I'll select mm -hmm. my focus point beforehand and have it magnified and then have it focus on that point. Nice. And do you use anything like um, focus peaking or anything like that to help you highlight your focus points? Or do you just kind of wing it by like sight? I pretty much wing it by sight. Nice. I have played with that a little bit, but it's not really worked out for me very well. So I sight is my main, main choice. Nice. All right. So what do we have here? This is not a fungus. It isn't, but it's still in the forest. And, I like it. <laughs> um, this was actually one of the first shots I took with the 1240 when I got it. Mm -hmm. um, I think I still had my bird lens on my OM1. So I was just going up the creek hiking and um, we got some really cool shots up this creek. There's no trail up it. So you just kind of climb the creek itself and the water was really low in the summer. So I took some shots while we were going and that's uh, three shots EV bracketed. So um, I usually just do, I think two, two EV steps and, uh, and then I merge them in either Lightroom or Photoshop. I have not figured out how to make the in-camera bracketing work for me yet because that's just, mm. I'm not, I'm not super technical. I still barely use Lightroom to do anything more than like the exposure shutter, <laughs> like exposure value sliders. So um, that's that. I'm definitely not an editor either. I don't generally edit my images. I just so kind of like, I, yeah, I photograph them. I enjoy them. And I'm like, these are good. I'm posting them. Um, fun fact about the 12 to 40, cause I know you said you just got this lens. That lens focuses incredibly close. I want to say when I measured it, it was like half inch off the front of the glass, but don't quote me on that. So you can actually zoom all the way in with that lens and get incredibly close and almost like faux macro with it. So yes, you, sh you should get out there and try it more because so it's a really great lens. I took it with me to Victoria a few weekends ago. Um, and I went to, I, um, I just went to, um, the Empress and wandered around the gardens there and took hundreds of flower shots and I got some really cool macro shots with it. Yeah. So, it's amazing how close that lens really does focus. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously not the same level as the 60, but you can get in really, really nice and tight. And yeah. Well, the shot. thing is, is that sometimes you just want to get like the whole flower and not 
right. focus on like one point of it. So yeah, I had a really good time with it. So that was, um, I can't wait to actually get a chance to look at those photos. <laughs> I know. Well, I will, I will stop asking you to do my shows all the time <laughs> so you can get back to editing <laughs> and looking at your photos. Um, let's see, let's see here. Oh, Ooh, what are these guys? So, um, that first one is skunk cabbage. Um, and they come up in the spring and they stink horribly. Um, but they are so beautiful and they're just like more into the forest things. I know they're not slime molds or fungus, but, um, there are other things that we find in the spring and the summer. And I just thought they'd share them. Um, the second one is actually, it's um, called a candy stick. Um, and they grow on Matsutake um, mycelium, I guess. Is, so they like feed off of it. So I don't know if they're symbiotic or parasitic, but they, um, so they grow on a specific mushroom, a pine mushroom. And so they're mushroom related. Um, and they're, they're actually related to blueberries, like blueberry plants. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So they're a plant, but they grow with a mushroom. I don't know, kind of in there. I just thought I'd add some of the other stuff. And then the, the, this, uh, the third one is an orchid and it's probably, I want to say three millimeters tall, maybe five millimeters tall, um, which I don't know what that is in inches to, to translate that, but it's really tiny. Um, and so they're another fun macro subject and they're super challenging when you're trying to use natural light because they're usually in the wind <laughs> and waving around and they're usually growing in shady low light areas. So um, they're definitely a challenge. I'd really like to try a diffuser on that <laughs> and see what I can get out of it. But um, none of these are stacked photos. They're just all um, single shots. Somebody said it's one inch e plus 25.4 millimeter. I, I have this problem all the time when I talk about the weather <laughs> because I can't go to Celsius for all of you guys that are in Celsius. I'm just that lonely Fahrenheit girl over here. It's like, it's hot in California. <laughs> so I get it. And they, they're always somebody in the chat who can answer the conversion for us. So thank you, Ian. <laughs> I want to say it's probably like a quarter of an inch or less, maybe even like a 16th, but I'm not sure. Um, an eighth of an inch says Dave in business, oh, okay. North Dakota. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, I told you somebody will always answer it for us because <laughs> I always mess up the conversion and I'm like, I don't know. And then somebody out there knows because they are always looking to prove me wrong. So it's fine. <laughs> um, I had a question for you. Oh, here it is. Um, for your macro shots, are you using just the regular metering that's in the camera? Because I know you said you use aperture priority. So do you use spot metering or do you just use the regular um, exposure metering in the camera? I use both. It depends on what I'm shooting and um, where I'm using the light from. But nice. I yeah. use spot metering quite a bit. Nice. Yeah, that but makes sense. Like I said, it depends. Yeah. All right. And an owl. I love this shot. That mold, or I'm not mold, sorry, moss. I've been talking about mold all night. That <laughs> moss is like the perfect, most pristine color of green I've ever seen. I love it. <laughs> so these, this, um, we have four or three sets of parent owls in this park. Um, it's like, um, I want to say um, maybe like three kilometers square uh which is like i again somebody no. will answer in the chat what is three <laughs> kilometers squared dave from bismarck north dakota okay, continue <laughs> um, and uh so they sometimes there's a lot of owl babies in in there because some one year they had one pair had three babies and then there was two sets of two so there was like oh. owls infested everywhere but this year these there was only this one and it's twin um and um, they're still kicking around because I saw them the other day, but they're around everywhere. And they're just, um, this is the only bird shot I included, I think. Um, so this is one of the other things I do. This is, um, I took this on the OM1 and the ISO is actually fairly high on it. And it was hard to get this shot because um, my hands were shaking and it was a bit windy and it's obviously very dark in there, but the sun was kind of on them a bit. So, um, but I love these guys. Yeah, they're so cute. I've actually only ever photographed owls like when we have done like 
VIP tours of like some conservation facilities and stuff like that. I've always wanted to find fun in the wild, but they're always out in dark times where you can't, I never yeah. have my camera with me. I've gotten many other birds. Okay. So Dave from Bismarck says, <laughs> oh, Andy says it's 1.8 square miles. And then there we go. Yeah. The feathers with the moss is perfect. Yes. A beautiful barred owl. Yeah. Thank you. I love what, see everybody. This is why I love our comment section so much. Our uh, OM system Olympus community is so awesome and so helpful on every episode. Anytime we've ever had a question, somebody has come to the table with the answer and you guys are the wholesome content awesome. that we need. I love it. <laughs> it's amazing. All right. So what, Oh, we're back into the moldy guys. Okay. Yes. We're, we're down on the ground. Um, so the first one is oyster mushrooms and those are edible. Um, mm. I don't recommend eating anything from this park where they were shot because it's a dog park and, uh, mm. those are on the ground. No, thank you. So yeah, no, do not recommend. Um, the next one's a tiger beetle and it has a, um, I think they're called phoretic mites. Um, so if you, I don't know if anybody can zoom in on those, but, um, they're like a symbiotic mite that live with the beetles. And it's a carrion beetle. So it takes the mites and carries them to like the different uh, dead things that they go scavenge, I guess. Um, and then the mites actually jump off and they eat like the fly larva, um, leaving the food, the carrion for the beetles to eat. So this is like a whole life cycle on one bug. Like that's a whole ecosystem. Yeah. It, wow. Super cool. Magnificent. And Mag the armor on those things is really cool when you can zoom into it. And those, the, all these shots are my first attempts at focus stacking. So they're not like maybe the best, but um, it's kind of cool to start getting into it. Um, the third is the chocolate tube slime mold. Jamie had some of those um, photos of that and it is such a cool looking slime mold. I, it's one of my favorites to find. I love, love, love finding it. And yeah, she's right. Cool. There are certain logs that it just populates on over and over and over and over again. So once you find it, you know where to find it forever. That's awesome. That's a really good tip because I had no idea that you could go back to kind of that same spot and relocate yeah. every year, that same type. That's amazing. Yeah. Somebody is asking, um, when when you did the mushroom shots where you merged the frames, are you using the in-camera stacking or did you bracket those? I bracketed in? them and then did it in Lightroom or Photoshop. I think I did it in Photoshop because I don't think I managed to successfully do it in Lightroom. Got it, got it. So it's just a new thing and I'm just trying it out and figuring out the best way that it works for me. Nice. You'll have to call me up. I will walk you through focus stacking in camera and it'll make your life so much easier. You want to edit it. any. <laughs> I got you, Robin. You just call me. Yeah, uh, somebody wants to like know. It's such a learning curve. Right. No, and it totally is. Like we've talked about focus stacking a million times on this show, a trillion times probably. And, you know, there's no secret sauce. There's no magic way to get it perfectly right. It's all dependent on your F-stop, the lens you're shooting, the angle yeah. of view. So it does take a lot of experimentation and it can be yeah. kind of daunting when you're newer to that that process in the camera but once you get it and it clicks and you know how to quickly make the changes you want it's it is super helpful because then you don't have to edit all those images together because i'm lazy and i hate editing images together <laughs> I had a lot of failure where it's like it's i started at the wrong point and it pulls mm -hmm. it forward or backwards and it's just not the focus isn't where i want it to be so it's just a learning curve and once i get it figured out it'll be great but we're just in the cusp of getting it right. So some, some are working out, more aren't, but um, at some point more will be working out and I'll have less fail. <laughs> you know, I did see a comment come through earlier that really stuck out to me was, you know, these images that you're showing are so beautiful and very unique. And somebody was saying how excited they were to see something that hasn't been super edited or use some crazy technique to get it. You know, you're you're really shooting these straight out of camera for the most part and getting these phenomenal, really interesting images. And I think that's very inspiring to know that like, you know, it's your eye and your, and your willingness to get out there into nature that really brings these images to the table. And I think you've done a stupendous job. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. I think they're beautiful. And somebody else called that out and thank you. I don't remember who said that. Sorry. Ooh, what's this guy? Uh, he's that right. Is one type of slime mold. <laughs> I, mean, I can't remember off the top of my head what it is, but I really loved, 
I love it when I come across like a brown surface that is covered in something that is, has like super vibrant colors all over it. Um, and these slime molds there, you can see them from so far away. You're like, what is that from across the forest? Um, and then right. there's some nice green moss behind it. So that was just a nice aesthetic. Yeah. This is on my new like forest bucket list is to keep an eye out for slime mold and slow down. I'm always looking, well, for one, I'm always looking for bears so they don't eat me, but I'm like always looking for mushrooms that are big and bright and colorful, but this like down low to the ground, I need to focus on more. This is amazing. Just so colorful. I love the colors that slime mold presents. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, oh, we made it to the end. Oh, yay. Hey, we did it. <laughs> so Robin, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions now. Okay. I love, I love Canada, by the way. How far away from Whistler are you? Um, well, That's I'm it. on the Sunshine Coast, so I'm a ferry ride, which is 40 minutes from Vancouver. Um, gotcha. Which isn't bad. because Like I commuted to Vancouver for 10 years for, for work. Oh my gosh. Um, That's wild. Well, it's, 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 it is. But when you think about it, there's a lot of people that drive a 40 minute commute. True. So and the ferry is much more beautiful and gives you more opportunities for great photos. <laughs> exactly. Um, so there's that. Um, and then I think it's a maybe an hour and 20 minute drive to Whistler from the Horseshoe Bay, which is the ferry. So um, yes. it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, I don't make it up there very often. I wish I made more time to get up there, but I my aunt lives in Clearwater, um, which is where Wells Great Park is. And I have to say that I'm drawn to that a lot more than Whistler um, with all the waterfalls and the mountain, like there's trophy mountain flower fields up there and a whole bunch of like a whole wealth of things to photograph there. So if I have my choice, I usually bolt up there nice. um, because it's absolutely stunningly beautiful in that area. I love that. That whole, that whole portion of Canada in general is beautiful. I'm from the Pacific Northwest originally, and we did some work in Whistler and I did a road trip all the way up there and it was just, it is so beautiful. Up there. Kiss. So yeah. beautiful. Uh, somebody did have a quick question. Are you a raw shooter, a JPEG shooter or a combo shooter? I am a raw shooter. Nice. nice. Yeah. I don't even take, like, I don't have JPEG even turn on. So it's just, I just shoot in raw which is a lot more work, I think probably. Um, mm -hmm. But I like the control that it gives me when I'm doing stuff, especially because I tend to underexpose because I'm shooting in natural light. And mm -hmm. I find that there's a lot more noise if I'm trying to bring the JPEGs up. Got it. Like the, yeah. bring the exposure up in the JPEGs. Nice. Awesome. Somebody said, I so love Canada, but they're from the UK. We appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robin, I'm going to let you also have your evening back, but I really just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me and being brave enough to join me when I just kind of cold <laughs> called you out of the blue and said, do you want to be on my show? <laughs> so thank, thank you, you for accepting that. And I really appreciate it. Yes. And I'm just going to throw your Instagram up here really quick again, one more time before I say goodnight. So if you guys want to follow Robin for any of her moldy goodness or her bird goodness or her forest photos you should definitely check out robin's work and again i found robin on our user gallery on getolympus.com which i put in the chat earlier so definitely share your images with us um, in the future because i want to see them and i want to share them with our, all of our viewers and Robin, I hope you have a super great night. I'm going to say goodbye yeah. to everybody, but I'm going to let you go. So thank, thank you, you so much. much. I joining. really appreciate it. Have a great night, Robin. Take care. Bye. All right, guys. I have one more slide for you. One more. Pretty soon, it is going to be World Fungus Day, quickly followed by National, National, National. It's the end of the show, guys. Bear with me. National Mushroom Day on October 15th. So if you're on Instagram or if you're on that user gallery, share us your mushroom photos, share us your fungus photos, share us your slime mold photos, tag us in them because if you don't tag us, we can't see them and then we can't share them or put them on our feed or put them on our Friday favorites, which are coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday favorites on the OM System Cameras channel is going to be animals. If you're watching this in the future, it's probably not animals anymore. <laughs> but thank you all 
for joining us as always. I'm gonna just double check this comment section before I say goodbye. Great presentation. Yes, it was a great presentation. We had two awesome photographers with us. Um, and just as always, I know I say this all the time. I love our community. I love our comment section. You guys are so great, so wonderful and just such a vibrant community. And as always, thank you guys all for watching every single month along with me and hanging out and seeing our awesome photographers and always being supportive of them and helping us out in the comment section when we can't do math conversions from miles to kilometers. You guys are the greatest. And I just really hope you guys have a good night. Thank you. Bye.